invite in Life with Elizabeth, featuring Del Moore. Incident number one in the life of Elizabeth occurred because Alvin wasn't up on his children's stories. If he had been, Elizabeth could never have completed the following psychological study. Elizabeth, how are you tonight? Boy, you're in a silly mood. What are you going to do to poor Alvin? Careful, he's watching. <laughs> Alvin? No. <laughs> How did you know what I was going to say? Every time you read a magazine, you either want to remodel the house or give me a test. The answer is no on both counts. While you're breathing down my neck, what's a four-letter word meaning hair suit? Hair. And yours is getting thin. H-A-I. What do you mean mine is getting thin? It's not fat. <laughs> That's a joke, honey. I didn't make it up, but I changed it around, so... What's the matter? Who's with this? My hair getting thin? Well, nothing more hair wouldn't cure. You got a couple of hand mirrors around? Why two? You can't see the top of your head with only one. I have an idea, darling. If you could roll your eyes back far enough, you could check it from the inside. Very funny. Here, let me help. Look, no thanks. Go away. I don't trust you. Alvin, what a thing to say. My gosh, it's worse than I thought. <laughs> I told you, there's a ball spot back there as big as my hand. Wait a minute, I can't get these mirrors to hold still. Say, is that a piece of metal in my head? No, it's my ring. Oops. <laughs> I think I fell for that business about the hand in front of the mirror, I didn't see. <laughs> well, maybe you didn't. But I bet for a minute there you thought you were a knucklehead. <laughs> a knucklehead. <laughs> Elizabeth, I shan't divorce you for this. However, I do feel constrained to punish you in some way. Constrained? Was it a test you wanted me to take? Yes. I won't take it. That's your punishment. Okay. Seven letter word. Cambodian Have you had that red spot on your ear very long? In your left ear? Of course. <laughs> your left ear. <clears throat> Look, never mind. I don't want your ring suddenly dangling from my earlobe. <laughs> my gosh, it's on fire. Look. Look there. <laughs> it's my lipstick. Yeah, you... <laughs> I'll take the test. Well, darling, how sweet of you. You don't have to, you know. Oh, no, no. Don't give me that. If I don't take the test, little things will be happening to me all night. What's the first question? Shoot. Well, you've already answered the first two. I have? Yeah. The test is called... How to test your husband's ego. So? The first one says, ask your husband if he thinks he's losing his hair and see what happens. Did I do the right thing? Sure, it says, sooner or later, the husband who is told he is losing his hair will find some way to examine his scalp. You just weren't very subtle about it, that's all. What's this got to do with my ego? The man who is told he is losing his hair will find it is a slur on his manly beauty. It's like telling a woman her nose just fell off. Okay, so I prefer to keep my hair. How about the uh, lipstick on the ear? It says, if you can kiss him on the ear without his noticing it, he's more tired than you think. It doesn't say that at all. Now, go on with the test. Come on. Okay. Now, here's a picture that looks like a plate of spaghetti, right? Mm hmm Just a bunch of lines. Only a man with extrasensory perception will be able to discern the image of a swan floating on a lake in the above picture. Let me see that. <laughs> see it? There it is. Isn't that awful, darling? All I can see are a bunch of lines. Really? Boy, you better have your eyes checked. <laughs> Look at there. Can't you see it? Look. There's the neck. There's the eyes. Really, can't you see it? No. 
<laughs> well, put down that I have extra sensory perfection. Perception. That's what I said. Put it down, put it down. <laughs> okay, now here's the next one. <laughs> it says, drop a pin on the rug from five feet away and see if he can hear it. Look, don't bother. Nobody could hear a pin drop on the rug. Only a man with the intelligence necessary for complete concentration will be able to pass this test. No, I guess you're right, honey. It's kind of ridiculous. Elizabeth, march right back over there and <laughs> drop that pen. What are you saying? You ready? Ready. Drop it yet? Mm-hmm. I heard it. <laughs> I kind of thought you would. Just as clear as a bell. It went ping. <laughs> Put on that I had... Elizabeth. Put the R in that word. There isn't any R in pinhead. Put the R in. Oh, pin heard. That's better. <laughs> oh, this next one's impossible. Nothing's impossible for some people. Proceed. Oh, brother. Is that the question? <laughs> You're supposed to listen to a cushion. Listen to a cushion. Now, what do they expect you to hear? The ticking. <laughs> now, just before we get back to the test, it doesn't say that at all. Now, what does it say? <laughs> it says, even college professors sometimes miss this test. You are supposed to hear the feathers in a cushion. As they react to atmospheric pressure, the feathers contract and expand. That's ridiculous. As they contract and expand, they make a sound audible only to those with a hearing range above 10,000 cycles. That good? Only 27 people out of every thousand pass this test. <laughs> I thought that'd do it. I hear them. So soon? Yeah, put it down. They make a sort of a little rustling sound. <laughs> Elizabeth, will you put the R in that word? <laughs> I did. Feather... Oh, feather heard. <laughs> What's next? That's all. You did very well, darling. Oh. How do they uh, score your ego? Well, they have several categories. Enough ego to get by, enough ego to do well, enough to do very well, and so forth. You know. How'd I do? You come under the heading, enough to choke a horse. <laughs> For goodness sake. You know better than that. I'm sorry, and you really did. You did very well. <laughs> so well, as a matter of fact, I'm supposed to read you a little story. Oh, really? Well, good. Go ahead. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a foolish king. Mm -hmm. One day, the queen said... Oh, look at the beautiful swan on the lake. The king said, where? The queen said, right over there. It is said that only a nudnik cannot see the swan on the lake. <laughs> the king, not wanting to be called a nudnik, said, oh, I see the swan. Oh, that's cute. Go on, honey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then the queen said, can you not hear the pine needle fall upon the grass? It is said that only a nudnik cannot hear the pine needle fall upon the grass. <laughs> King didn't want to be a nudnik, so he pretended to hear the pine needles. <laughs> what a zap. Go on. So then the queen picked up a cushion and said, Can you not hear the voices of the feathers as they converse with one another? It is said that only a nudnik can us. Alvin, you're not that stupid, are you? Oh, no, honey, I get it. I get it. <laughs> well, I'm glad you had me worried there for a minute. No, the king didn't want to be a nudnik, so I... He pretended to, to uh, hear the feathers, right? <laughs> Go on. I started the whole thing. Oh, wait a minute, honey. Uh, wait, I'll finish the story for you. I'd just as soon forget all about oh, it. Oh, no, you'll be interested in this. Yeah. You see, the king loaned the queen his automobile one day, and he had to ride the bus home from I'll work. I'll be in the den. Uh, and the king wanted something to read on the bus, so he bought a magazine. And uh, he read a stupid article about a husband's ego. And he knew his wife would give him the test. Elizabeth, I don't like the demon grin. Elizabeth. So he let his poor wife think that he was just a nudnik while she worried. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Get out. Elizabeth. Elizabeth, aren't you ashamed? <laughs> Incident number two in the life of Elizabeth occurred the night she and Alvin fooled around with mental telepathy. The telepathy they got right away. It was the mental that was throwing them the curve. <laughs> hey, hello. Oh, hi, Babs. Just a minute. Elizabeth! 
Honey. Who is it? Genius friend of yours up the street. Boobs. <laughs> Hello, Bev. Hi. Oh, we're doing fine. How about you? What's on your mind? That's a ridiculous question. <laughs> What's on your mind? Uh-huh. It sounds interesting. No, we don't have the magazine, but I, I read the article in the beauty parlor. Yeah. Well, I'd love to, but I don't think I have the brain power for it. I suppose she does. <laughs> okay. Well, listen, I'll probably see you tomorrow. Brother. All right. Good. Thanks for calling. Bye-bye. I would appreciate it if you wouldn't make your profound little comments while I'm on the phone. I'm sorry. What did vacuum head want? <laughs> she read that article I was telling you about on metal telepathy. Oh. She thinks if she and I learn to use telepathy, we could have our phones taken out. Oh, brother. <laughs> well, Babs may not have a very superior intellect, but she isn't very bright. She... What's the matter with the set? I don't know. I got a good picture, but no sound. Well, why don't you try another channel? No use. I've tried them all. Won't work. Wait a minute, honey. That looks like a pretty good movie. It'll have to sound like a good one, too, before I... Wonder what she's saying. Come in. Let's try to read their lips. Mm. Oh, he just said, have a cucumber. He did not. He said, I love you. Oh. <laughs> she just said something about the papers. Uh, she said, don't turn purple. <laughs> That, that was either Daddy can't stand the sight of you or Dudley has the measles. Telepathy would come in handy now, wouldn't it? Sure. Hey, what's he dunking his wristwatch in the water for? It's the commercial. Oh, well, no good without the sound. No. Well, I guess one picture is it's not worth a million, million words. words. What did you say? The same thing you did, the same time. Well, that isn't an ordinary phrase, either. You know, you and I do that quite often. Sure, but I thought it was because we're around each other so much. Well, it could be that, but it could be telepathy, too. Yeah. This article Baz was talking about, it says that mental telepathy is a proven thing. No hocus pocus? For real? No, honey. They've been experimenting with it at Duke University for some 20 years. Hmm. I wish I could remember some of the experiments. Do you want to try it? Sure. We're cut off from the outside world anyway. What do we do? I'm trying to think. There's something about cards, but I, I can't. No, I know. You go on in the other room. Bring back what I tell you to bring back. Okay. The way we think alike, it ought to be a snap for us. Huh. All righty. <laughs> okay. Okay what? Well, bring in what I told you to bring in. But I didn't hear you. You're not supposed to hear me. I was thinking. Oh, well, let's do it again. <laughs> Alvin? You ready? I've been waiting. Well, maybe you better think of the object and then think, okay. No, that's pretty advanced. Look, I'll just think of the object and then I'll call you. All right. Look, now, don't, don't change the object because I'm getting a real strong signal. <laughs> Okay. Uh, huh. Alvin! Is this what you were thinking? No! Then why all of the excitement? Alvin, I was thinking of the mop. How close can you get? No kidding. You're not going to believe me, Elizabeth. You're not going to believe this, but I almost picked up the mop. I came that close. No. Yes. Well, li listen, maybe there's some kind of metal static out there in the kitchen. Maybe I'm working too far away. No, 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 no. The, the article says that distance doesn't mean a thing. Really? Look, why don't you do the thinking? Maybe you have a more powerful transmitter than I have. Possible. Quite yeah. possible. Yeah. That's right. Here we go. Okay. Alvin. <laughs> okay. Nothing came through. Maybe you better think a little louder. Just think a little louder. <laughs> okay. Is this it? I was thinking of a vase. Well, now, wait a minute. It, it, it wasn't supposed to work every time. And a lamp and a vase aren't so very different. You try one more. 
Hold on now. This time I'm going to knock you right off your feet. <laughs> okay. Well, okay if you want to cheat. What do you mean, cheat? You know perfectly well I can't lift the bird bath. I wasn't thinking of bird bath. I was thinking of saucer, an ordinary saucer. Bird bath. Well, wait a minute, honey. Listen, they're both round. Sure, and I've, I've heard of a lot of canaries taking baths in saucers. And not only that... Oh, let's face it, honey, a mop and a broom aren't the same thing either. Well, I'm willing to say something else. Neither one of us has a superior intellect. That's all. Now, wait a minute. That's, that's facing a little too much. After all, mental telepathy takes two, you know, one to transmit and one to receive. Yeah. I don't want to say who, but one of us goofed. Oh. <laughs> Honey, why don't you contact Duke University? Tell them to send you some pamphlets on it. Maybe we could really get good at this thing. Maybe that's a good idea. Yeah. Babs. Babs. I got your message. <laughs> Incident number three in the life of Elizabeth occurred on National Break the Window Day. As you know, National Break the Window Day is almost any Sunday in the summer when the weather is good enough for the neighborhood husbands to be practicing golf shots on the front lawn. Okay, Mac, now watch the slow backswing. Oh, Elizabeth, that's the worst thing you can do to a golfer. And that's the worst thing you can do to a housewife. Look at my lawn. Hold it, Mac. Having a little trouble. I thought you so-called golfers were supposed to replace your pivots. Divots. And I can't replace it. It came out of Mac's lawn. Mac who? McDonald over there. You mean he hit this from clear across the street and two houses up? Yeah, he got under it a little. I will not have you two characters batting grass back and forth. Go in the house! <laughs> Having a little strain with the missus! And don't call me the missus. What'd you ever say again how much damage gophers do? Honey, all we... Well, we have the only lawn on the block with chicken pockets. But, honey... <laughs> uh... You missed me! I didn't have my mouth open. <laughs> well, you tell Bobby Jones to take his caddies and go in the house! I uh, guess that's all for today, Mac. <laughs> spoil sport. Well, I'm happy to spoil this sport. Why don't you do something useful like Jack Boniface over there? Is he washing that car again? <laughs> sure. <laughs> what a built. But that car of his thinks is a cloudburst every Sunday. Looks good, Jack. Oh, oh thanks. Car looks good, too. Elizabeth. <laughs> Can you do that, honey? <laughs> he waved to me with his biceps. <laughs> what are you doing? Trying to wave back. I can't even nod hello. <laughs> oh, honey, why did you? You made me hook. Oh. Oh, Alvin, you broke Jack's windshield. Oh, gee whiz, you talked on my backswing. He's going to feel terrible, honey. You know how he babies that car. We'll have it fixed. We'll have a repair, Jack. Uh oh, here he comes. I don't like the look in his eye. Think I hear the phone? Yeah. We'll gladly have. Alvin! No, you forgot your evidence. Evidence? <laughs> <laughs> This yours? Oh, you, you can have it, Jack. Elizabeth and I were just saying we'd be more than glad to replace your windshield. <laughs> These things happen. I talked on his back swing. <laughs> Go ahead and keep the ball, Jack. I've got plenty of them in the car. <laughs> no, no, wouldn't think of it. Say, where is your car? I'll put this away. Uh, oh, oh, it's in the driveway. No, Alvin was just going to put his sack of bats away. Honey, don't let him go to all that trouble. No trouble at all. Oh, nice guy. <laughs> Get it, Alvin. The way he pampers that car, I thought... <laughs> Now I get it. Me too. Take it easy, Mac. I think you broke a milk bottle or something. Come to the party, Alvin. I put the ball in the car, Alvin. Well, thanks, Jack. You don't have to do that. Come on, sit down, Jack. Well, I think we have a little discussing to do. Well, glad to. You know, I feel much better now. I'll bet you do. Four. It isn't as if we were... <laughs> Alvin, would you tell Sam Sneed to aim somewhere else? Okay, Mac, that's enough. I don't think he can hear me. So what's with this guy? He's liable to break something. That troubles you, Mr. Boniface? Well, now you'll have to understand my position in this thing. You see, Alvin broke my windshield. So it was either hit Alvin or do what I did. 
Yeah, and besides, our windshield can't hit back. Huh, what are you two talking about? <laughs> go look at the car, darling. Why? Just go look. Go on. Car? <laughs> he has a temper, too. You know, I don't know how he's going to take this thing. Well, I still think I did the right thing. Sort of a windshield for a windshield. Well, there's another old saying, too, you know, turn the other windshield. Okay. Yeah, that's the way it's going to be, is it? Wait a minute. I'm going to knock his toes off with of a nine iron. What's wrong with fists? Nothing. No, no, wait, Alvin, he has muscles you never even heard of. <laughs> wait, Alvin. Where are you going? Over to Max. He broke our windshield, didn't he? Mac didn't break our windshield. Say, maybe you better not tell him I did it. It's kind of tough at that. <laughs> Do you really rather I didn't? Rather you wouldn't what? Go ahead, tell him. <laughs> you two have yourselves in a situation that only two men could have gotten into. She's always given me that men are just little boys routine. My wife, same way. Mm -hmm. Look out! <laughs> Tell Mac I'm going to tell his mama on him. Okay, Mac, that's enough. Didn't even holler four that time. Yeah. All right, Elizabeth, cut out the sarcasm. Who broke our windshield? Junior here. Well, here's the way it lines up to me, Alvin. You broke my windshield, right? Only because she talked on my backswing. No excuse for that, Elizabeth. I know. It's like somebody talking when you're lagging your Aggie. <laughs> tell us we're acting like little boys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I recognize it. However, you, you broke my windshield. Because she was talking on your backswing. Right. But I didn't know she was talking on your backswing, so naturally I get a little sore. Naturally. So he put the ball in our car through the windshield. Well, I'm not trying to start something. No, but I, look out! <laughs> <clears throat> Pretty bad slice he's got there. I keep telling him. Turn your right hand in a little bit. Look, I have a wonderful idea. Why don't all of us kids go down to the vacant lot and build a cave? My wife gets this way when she hasn't had a nap. There's so much glass in the neighborhood now, the real kids won't be able to go barefoot for a month. Jack, there's no reason for you to break our windshield when we offer to pay for yours. He explained that. He had a lot off steam. Elizabeth, my windshield can't be replaced. Oh. Why not? Well, where am I going to get all my windshield stickers? Oh, no. no, really. I had stickers from Carlsbad Caverns, from, from Yosemite, from Lake Louise. That's the one with the blue stripe. Right, right. Uh -huh. uh, Yellowstone, Johnson's Cave. Oh, how about Tahoe? Tahoe, that's the one with the pine tree. Got it, the little got green. it. Gee. Bryce Canyon, Bryce. Oh. Grand Canyon. Oh, it's a good thing we broke your windshield. Now at least you'll be able to see where you're going. New Orleans, <laughs> Miami, oh. Miami Beach. South Miami. North Miami. Wait a minute. Ocean Park. I get them no more. Fisherman's Wharf. Got it? Look, kids, I hate to bring us back to the original problem, but... Alvin broke your windshield accidentally, Jack. But Jack broke our windshield on purpose, so I think that the, for that reason... Pismo Beach. Pismo Beach. What's that, a, a herring on a field of clam chowder? Elizabeth, we'll each pay for our own windshield, so stop being a little mother hen. It was your fault anyway. <coughs> My fault? Well, you talked on his backswing. Oh, for... Here comes another message from Garcia. That slice is getting worse. Move your hand around a little. Like this, Mac. Here, show him, Alvin. Put the ball. No, no, Jack. No, Alvin, don't you dare hit that ball. Now, watch this, Mac. I'll talk on your backswing. No! You hooked. She talked. Is it supposed to turn left like that? That's old Lady Skinridge's window. Come on, let's hide quick. Show me that, did it, Ron? Quick, Ron, hide. Come on. Now, <laughs> you'll be already shinnied up a tree. Did she come out of the house yet? Go away, she'll see. Right up to Mrs. Skinridge and tell her you're sorry and offer to pay for that window. Oh, you, you. Hey, look, look, she hit me the other day. Say goodbye to the people. Goodbye, goodbye everybody. everybody. Honey, she hit Richard. Oh, you're welcome. And now, here to say goodbye to you is the lovely star of our show, Betty White. Thank you, Jack. And thank you, everybody. Thank you. You know, Elizabeth's troubles still weren't over. Mrs. Skinridge was so proud of the little boys for owning up, she gave them cookies and lemonade. And they ate too much, and they didn't feel well at all. <laughs> Until we see you again, be with us next week, will you? Goodbye, everybody.